It is better to die for an idea that will live than to live for an idea that will die. Steve Biko was laid to rest in the simplest of fashions. His coffin carried by donkey cart in September 1977. His funeral was attended by 20,000 people, including diplomats from 13 countries, his close friend Donald Woods and members of opposition parties. More could have packed in had security police not set up a cordon around the town. Biko's short life of just 31 years was packed with political activism. There had been deaths in detention before, but the country and world were shocked that someone with a statue of Biko could have died in this fashion. He had been returning from a trip to Cape Town when he was arrested outside King Williamstown. His banning order had confined him to the town. The apartheid government viewed him as a threat, as he had been involved in New SAS as a student, SASO, the Black People's Convention, and the organization most identified with him, the Black Consciousness Movement. Black consciousness is an attitude of the mind and a way of life, the most positive call to emanate from the black world for a long time. Its essence is the realization by the black men of the need to rally together with his brothers around the cause of their oppression, the blackness of their skin, and to operate as a group to rid themselves of the shackles that bind them to perpetuate servitude. His message of black pride resonated with both South Africa's oppressed and others worldwide. But state brutality grew alongside this message. Biko was taken to Warmer Police Station in Port Elizabeth and then to the notorious security police officers in the Sunlam building. The PE police were apparently determined not to show Biko the respect they believe he enjoyed from King Williamstown Police. Despite an inquest and later testimony by officers at the TRC, there's never been clarity on what happened on the night of September the 6th. Biko was examined by doctors. One said he was shamming. Another recommended he receive medical treatment, but later allowed him to be transferred to Pretoria, naked and manacled in the back of a van. The official version of his death was that he had died of hunger. His death on this day, leaving the then Minister of Police, Jimmy Kruger, to say it left him cold. I'm going to be me as I am, and you can beat me or jail me or even kill me, but I'm not going to be what you want me to be.